Well, hello, everybody. It's Mrs. Perryman, and I am so glad to get to talk to you guys today. I hope everybody's doing all right. So just wanted to say hello, and, and I'm so, so glad that we're back in business. I am back at school. This is day two of, of Mrs. Perryman finally being back at school. I have missed everybody terribly, and the, the staying home stuff is for the birds. I like seeing people. So I'm excited to see all of you guys on your next scheduled day to be here and look forward to, to seeing what you've been up to and hearing about all of your Christmas uh, excursions and things you things you got to enjoy. So anyway, be, be thinking about some stories and things because I'm going to want to hear all about it. So hopefully everybody is is doing good and been carrying on with with some with your school stuff. You guys have been working on this class has been working on meats. So hopefully you guys have been on Moodle and have checked out uh, the meat category. You know you can go on Moodle, go to my courses, and you should have one that says meats. And uh, that is where we're at now. Last week we did uh, we did beef, and um, this week we're going to be talking about chicken. So, uh, but before we get get uh, going there, um, if you are an adult student, you may have received uh, an email of something about the Otha Grimes Scholarship, and I would encourage you to check that out. That is a, a very nice scholarship that will assist you with tuition and other types of school expense. And um, it, it would be a, be a good thing to have. So if you're an adult student, this is for adult students only. Um, you should have received that application in your NT email. If you did not, let me know and I can forward that to you if you have it and you're not sure what to do, I'm very happy to help you with that or help you fill that out or give you any information that you may need to be able to get that done. It's due pretty quickly. I think I saw the 21st maybe, which is like Thursday. So I think that's tomorrow, isn't it? Um, so we better get cracking on that if you wanna get that turned in. But like I said, I'm happy to help you. So if you'll contact me, uh, either after class here or first thing tomorrow, we can get that whipped out and get it turned in for you. Um, if you are a Pell student, remember that uh, hopefully you're keeping track of your school hours and then you're turning those hours in. So that's how they uh, track your payments. Uh, and so if you don't turn that in, you, you may not get paid. So please keep track of those. Um, also, if for any of you guys that are planning on coming back to tech next year, I think with the, the year two folks, you guys won't be able to come back to this class because you will have taken everything. But if you are planning on uh, maybe taking another class out here, you do uh, need to fill out that returning uh, student uh, pre-enrollment form. And what that does is it just saves your spot. So we like to give our current students first first dibs on, on uh, a class that they wanna take for the following year before we open that up to the general public. So, um, so as, a, as a current student, you guys get, get to the choice spots. So if you are planning on coming back to tech in some, uh, some uh, class out here, if you will look on your, in your email, you should have gotten um, an email from Mrs. Gatewood that has that form on it, um, and it's called pre-enrollment form. Um, I'll have some here if if you uh, are are not able to print that out at home. I'll, I'll have some here, hard copies, and then you can turn that in the the next time you're here. Uh, again, if that's you, if you're planning on uh, taking a different program out here next year it would be good to get your place reserved because we will have fewer spots next year than, than we will in, in current years. Um, we are looking at going to, for next year, going to a four day, a four day week here. So um, 
uh, with one day being virtual, we'll just do a smaller class size so we won't have that A block and B block anymore. We will just be, uh, you guys will be here Monday, Tuesday, we'll have virtual Wednesday, and we'll be here Thursday and Friday, but um, it'll just be a smaller class size as opposed to the different blocks. So that could be um, a definite improvement from having such, uh, such small classes. We're pretty excited about that, um, but, but what that means is we have some limited numbers in the program. So get those applications in if you are planning on um, uh, coming out here next year, we want to make sure that, that you guys uh, have first choice on the programs that you want to be in, okay? So I think that is all of the announcements. Anybody got anything going on I can help you with or need to know about? Well, you know, you can always call me or email me or text me and I'll do everything I can to help you, okay? See, that's not what I wanted to do. No, shoot. There, that's what I want. There we go. Oh man, does that look good or what? So um, we're gonna be talking about poultry. And I just was, was thinking, Man, I think that some version of chicken or turkey um, is, is pretty much on the menu all the time. And um, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about that. Man, that looks so good. Look how beautifully browned that, that turkey is. Gosh, that makes me hungry. <laughs> Okay, so I wanna talk to you first, let's talk about a little bit of, of vocab. So look at these chickens right here. This is a, a, a Rock Island Red here. And I think this one's what we call a, a lace, a, a wine dot. And um, I had, whenever, before I had my, my fox in the hen house, I had, had a bunch of those. Now I'm kind of down to three chickens and, and um, but gosh, they are such, Sweet. I think mine are more like pets than than uh, produce animals that are um, well. Anyway, more than producing animals, but but uh, anyway, they sure are are fun to watch. So anyway, but poultry. Just here's some little bit of vocab. Just I, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but poultry is kind of a an umbrella category and. And the types of animals that are in that poultry category, of course, like we're talking about just now is chicken, but turkey, duck, goose, guinea, and pigeon. Sometimes it's also called, I think you'll hear it called squab. And um, all of those different types of birds fall into that poultry category. And so some things that we are concerned about with poultry in general would be salmonella, right? Because that's the, the bug that usually gets us in trouble with different types of poultry. And in that, under that umbrella category of poultry that the cook temp on all of those things is 165. And um, has anybody ever had, Jaden, have you had duck before? I don't think I've ever had duck. Okay, or goose, or any of these other, any of these other uh, bird, pheasant, or quail, anything like that. Not that I know of. Okay, well, you know, I think you know, chicken and turkey are, are really a common type of meat, and we see that all the time. Some of the others, you know, um, in different parts of the state. You may see, I know like um, out west, sometimes you would see, um, see uh, quail and then even further out west, like in the panhandle, you might see pheasants or even further north up in Kansas. You're gonna see a lot of that around here. Um, around here, you'll see a uh, dove and um, I don't know how too many other wild birds around here, but again, all of that kind of falls in that poultry category. Those game birds or those wild birds tend to be more of a, a dark meat. 
and we'll talk a little bit more about that here here in a bit. Um, so, but I, like I said, I just wanted to run through some of this vocabulary with you. So that's poultry. So any of those winged bird type um, animals would fall into that category. You guys ever heard of giblets before? I haven't. Yeah, so like like a, maybe giblet gravy. Do you think about that at Thanksgiving maybe? I think I have had that. Yeah, so giblets is kind of a catch-all term uh, for the heart and the liver and the gizzard. Um, and in some some packaging in in birds like this, when we buy them at the store, sometimes you will find a little packet in the cavity of the bird that that contains those those particular things. And and they're used for a lot of things. And sometimes they're used as maybe the side dish for the for the dressing. Sometimes you'll see you know like fried fried uh, gizzard or fried liver. Um, that are just served as a as the part of the dinner itself, and so so it's a, a pretty pretty tasty part to reserve. Some other things: Have you ever heard about uh, white meat and dark meat as far as a chicken goes? Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Okay, do you do you have a favorite, guys? My favorite is the, is the white meat. Is the white meat okay? Emily, what's going on with you? What do you think? What's your favorite? Okay. Well, um, white meat. So when you, um, we'll talk about this a little bit here, and we've even got a comparison that we're going to talk about. But white meat on on a bird like a chicken, for instance comes from a place that there's not a lot of muscle where where the bird is not using muscles you know to walk around um it is lower in calorie usually because it's lower in fat and and therefore it cooks faster and it dries out faster and so sometimes you hear people that say like a, a leg or a thigh is a lot moisture than a chicken breast kind of dries out really quickly and so and that's why okay um and here's another vocab word fowl that's just another word for for bird all right so here's the dark meat thing here and again like we were talking about that usually is from the thigh or the leg it's higher in calorie just because it has more more fat in the area but it is, it's just like Jaden said, usually it's a little richer and a little more flavorful. You can definitely tell a difference in the color of the meat too. The, the breast meat tends to be a little bit lighter and pinker and the leg and thigh tend to be just a little bit darker and more of a, a brown tone. And so it's kind of interesting how, how that works. Isn't this pretty? Can you guys see this uh, picture of this pheasant over here? They are beautiful, beautiful birds. Whenever uh, we lived out west, you would see them uh, when we would be driving along the highway, you could see them in the in the bar ditches along the side of the highway. And they're so colorful and just beautiful. There's lots of um, hunters different times of the year. I think it's usually in the kind of the late fall. Um, and people will just come in droves out in, in southern Kansas and, and out in western Oklahoma to, to hunt these birds. And um, the feathers are so, so colorful and beautiful, um, but they are um, really pretty. They're not quite as, they're probably the size of a small chicken and maybe a little bit smaller than a chicken. Um, they are a little bit, the meat to me is a little bit stronger flavored than uh, than a chicken is, but um, lots of, of hunters have different ways that they prepare wild bird. Um, some people brine it uh, like in, a, in salt water. Some people have a swear by like a, a buttermilk mixture um, to kind of reduce the gaminess of it. 
Um, but a lot of that has to do with its diet. You know, if, if they are wild birds, they're not eating um, the the feed like a like a chicken would eat. And so, um, and they're also out there uh, working hard to get their food, whereas a chicken uh, doesn't have to work so hard because its food is brought to it. So, um, so that makes a difference in the the gaminess of the meat. But but nonetheless, it's quite tasty. Um, some people around here uh, on the lake uh, will go duck hunting, and duck is a, a very dark, kind of an oily type meat, and um, it does have a very strong flavor, and it's not, not necessarily everybody's cup of tea, um, but definitely uh, has its place, um, and there's lots of, of ways that that can be fixed, uh, prepared rather that uh, are quite tasty. You will see some farms uh, that are raising these type of game birds. Remember that uh, for sale to the public is, is a different kind of a, of, of a process than it is if you were just wanted to, to be a hunter and eat something like this at home. And so uh, you can buy uh, commercially raised quail and pheasant and duck and goose and that kind of things that would be suitable to sell in a restaurant. Um, but as far as just going out and shooting one yourself and then trying to sell that in a restaurant, you, you cannot do that. So um, anyway, there, there are applications where uh, you can buy that commercially though, but they are raised, uh, farm raised. But again, they're, they're beautiful and so pretty to see them in their natural habitat. So um, one, another technical term that we'll talk about, um, for instance, when you're cutting up a chicken, and we are, you know, detaching all of the different parts of the chicken. Another thing that we do, we might want to have uh, boneless chunks of meat. Sometimes you'll see boneless thighs or uh, maybe um, boneless skinless chicken breast. And so boning that just means that you're separating meat from the bone, which is just, just like it says. Here's a little bit more. Um, Tressing and tress is just a fancy word for tie. And has anybody ever seen tied uh, or tied like a turkey or a chicken when you roasted it? Jaden or Emily, have you done that? I don't think so, and I haven't done it. Okay. I don't think I have, but I think your Megan might be hungry. <laughs> well, that's good. I love roasted chicken. <coughs> I make one just about every Sunday for my family and. And it's just so handy to have have chicken meat on hand because you can you can have it for dinner or make chicken salad or make chicken soup or chicken and dumplings and man it 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 just is is so good to have. But whenever you tie a chicken, what you're doing is is um, keeping it all kind of tight and compact. And um, when you think about the way. Whenever, whenever it cooks, it starts to kind of loosen up a little bit. That connective tissue gets looser and looser and in the legs and the arms will just kind of, kind of start falling apart. Um, but tying it keeps it all up and together and it helps it um, roast more evenly. Um, and, it, and it's just prettier that way. But on your Moodle this time, I put, there's a, there's a, a YouTube video of how to tie a chicken. And there's also one how to cut up a chicken. And those are both really useful bits of information. You know, buying a, a whole chicken as opposed to um, a cut up chicken, it's cheaper uh, by the pound to buy the whole chicken than it is the cut up chicken. Um, and the other thing is, as you'll see in the YouTube video, is you get the benefit of the neck uh, when you buy the whole chicken. And the neck is wonderful for, for making stock with. So if you're making homemade chicken stock um, or making um, maybe a gravy, like giblet gravy and things like that, you'll want the neck. And um, so there's some, some benefits to it. And I just love the presentation of a whole roasted chicken. I think it's so pretty to, 
to slice that all up and everybody kind of has their choice of the the pieces of meat that they like and I, I just find it fun to do I like uh, to uh, I slice up usually onion and lemon and I put butter and salt and pepper in the cavity and um, then put the, the lemon in the onion inside and then I pour butter over the top and a healthy dose of salt and pepper. Um, I roast mine at about 400 degrees and it usually takes about an hour and 15 minutes or so in the oven. It has a beautiful brown skin and is just just yummy so I'd encourage you to, to try it most like a whole like a family roaster usually about eight bucks so you know for dinner and usually you can get a couple of meals out of it and so it's pretty economical all right here's another vocab word stuffing okay and stuffing is also known as dressing and so we probably remember that from Thanksgiving don't we and uh, you can can uh, stuff that in the cavity one thing you have to be wary of is that if you stuff the bird it may take it longer to cook than it would if it was not stuffed so you have to be sure that you're getting everything uh, internal that internal temperature does need to be 165 so you have to be careful with that but stuffing is generally things like uh, breadcrumbs cracker crumbs it might be cornbread uh, a mixture of different kinds of veg um, it can be all kinds of stuff but anyway imparts flavor and then it as the chicken cooks that moisture from the chicken uh, also gets uh, into the, the stuffing or dressing and uh, makes it quite delicious. Okay, and okay, so let's talk about grades of poultry for a minute. So the USDA, the US Department of Agriculture is the responsible agency for inspecting poultry. And we talked about this with, with beef also. And so whenever uh, you go to a, a plant, like a chicken processing plant, they may actually even have a USDA inspector that just works at that particular facility. Generally speaking, a lot of those inspectors are veterinarians and they specialize in, in the health of, of the particular animal that's being processed at that plant. Um, that they're they're looking for a that it's healthy right here where it says inspected for wholesomeness do you see that right there so that the animal was healthy the other thing that they're looking for see right here where it talks about these grades a b and c um sometimes during processing some of the um if the skin is damaged on the processing or if any of the bones are broken, it tends to uh, cause them to be a lower grade. So grade A means that, that most of the skin is intact, that none of the bones are broken. And so for B and C, oftentimes it will be things that are removed from the bone or that are, are ground. And so, so it's not something that visually you would see if, if the skin was off of it or if a bone was broken because you, they're not selling that part of the bird, okay? Um, but there's a lot of other things that go into the, the grade of how that is, um, of how poultry is, is graded for sale. Um, in your book, uh, there's a, a good uh, description of that, 406 and 407 or the page numbers on there, but I would encourage you to look at that because it, it does give you several uh, things that, that are looked for that determine the, the grade. Here's kind of a, just a little uh, visual on that. So grade A, for instance, right here, it, it uh, says, you know, like right here, the wingtips are missing, but other than that, it's fairly intact, but like here on wing, on B, it's missing like half of its wing. Do you guys see that? And then I can't really see behind 
hear what's going on. Oh, right here on grade C, um, it's missing its entire wing. So, so there's nothing wrong with the the meat of the chicken, but if you were to to roast that in your Sunday on your Sunday dinner as a whole chicken, it might look kind of weird that it, it doesn't have all of its parts. And so these two, although there's nothing uh, wrong uh, health wise with the B and C, it just may not look beautiful. And so those might be candidates for um, ground chicken, for instance, okay? All right, here's some more. So like a broken, like where this leg here is broken, uh, if it's protruding uh, through the skin, that would be a C. Um, so, and then like here on D, see all of this skin is missing here, or rather C. So that would be um, the uh, one that would be a candidate for uh, like ground chicken, for instance. So just, just some things that uh, they have to, to make the cut, so to speak, to be uh, grade A. And if they don't, then it's passed on, on down, okay? And that's just like, you know, when we talked about fruits and vegetables and things like that, um, they're, they're all kind of like that. So if they're not uh, perfectly formed, uh, then sometimes like for apples, for instance, if they're not a, a beautiful apple, sometimes they will be, um, you know, applesauce or apple juice, which there's nothing wrong with any of that, but um, there's, you know, a place for all of that. All right, so here's this, the white, in, in dark meat. And so I thought this visual was interesting. So the, the dark meat, this leg and the thigh and this white meat uh, in the, the breast area here. But remember, this is the part, you know, the part that where the animal is walking around on that leg and that thigh. So it's developed some muscle and it has more blood flow in that area. And so it's a, a darker, richer meat. Whereas up here in the breast, it doesn't have as much muscle. And so it's a lighter meat. And so um, that's uh, kind, of, kind of the difference in that. Okay. And oh gosh, doesn't that look good? <laughs> so, and here's the white meat uh, versus dark meat here. I don't know if you guys, do you guys have that, that, uh, bar down on the bottom. It might be if you, whenever you get on uh, Moodle, you can see all of the particulars down here. So white meat, as you can see here, is lower in fat. And dark meat is higher in fat. So they both have, kind of have, have some good things going on. It just depends on your, your taste of things that you like and what you're looking for. All right, so whenever you're purchasing poultry, so you can get it in, in so many different ways. Just, you know, a whole poultry. Um, you can get cut up poultry, frozen. You can often buy frozen pieces of chicken. You can buy boneless, skinless. You can buy the just a cut bone in. You can buy ground chicken. So there's, there's just tons of different ways to, to buy chicken. Chicken is pound for pound much cheaper than a lot of other meats, so it's very economical. The way that we, you know, as a restaurant, we determine what we're going to buy. You know, we look at the at our menu item, the recipe for it, and we will buy it usually in the form that we want to use it. Um, remember that poultry is very perishable. And so we need to make sure whenever we order it and receive it, that it is at the appropriate temperature. If it's frozen, it needs to be frozen. If it is um, refrigerated, you know, obviously 41 or below. When we store raw chicken, you know, it's, it's the, has the highest cook temperature. So guys, where does that go in the refrigerator? Do you remember? On the bottom shelf. You got it, Jaden. Yep, the bottom shelf because we don't want any of that dripping uh, getting on our ready to eat sort of things that have a lower cook temperature, right? And by that I mean, you know, uh, chicken is a 165 cook temperature due to salmonella, but 
uh, for instance, beef is 155. And so we wanna make sure that none of our chicken goo um, drips onto our hamburger meat because we would uh, uh, not get the right kill, kill temperature, right? Okay. All right, so fabrication of poultry. Fabrication is just a fancy word for cutting up or, or breaking it down or uh, separating it or even removing it from the bone, okay? Um, the thing, the difference, the why, why people choose to fabricate poultry as opposed to, to beef is because obviously it's a much, much smaller animal. And it's very easy to cut up a chicken and you can just do that on your kitchen counter, whereas you, you could not do that with, with a beef. So um, it, it's relatively easy for someone to, you know, practice a couple of times and just whip that right out. And honestly, in, in the world of culinary, being able to fabricate a chicken is, is really an essential skill. Um, I did put, a, I found a really good video, and I think I told you this, uh, and I put it on Moodle, and um, whenever you start cutting up a chicken, um, the first thing I do right here is I start with the legs, and I make an incision here in where this meat is, and you'll pop that, um, pull it back, and you can pop that hip joint out of place, and then your knife can just run right through there. You'll do the same thing with the wing. And then you'll start to uh, separate the, the front of the chicken from the back. And if you'll watch, there, there is a, a fat line right in here. And you'll just follow that up through the backbone. And the same deal whenever you separate the leg from the thigh, if you'll turn it over, there'll be a, a little fat line. And you'll just wedge your knife in between that joint and it'll just come right apart. And so it, it really makes sense whenever you, you kind of look at it, how you're gonna cut it up. Um, and so, but get on there and watch that video. And uh, I think you'll, um, some of you guys have done this before. And so you kind of know what we're talking about here, but I would encourage you to, to check it out. And um, like I said, uh, a chicken like this is about eight bucks. So, I mean, you could even do a little practicing at home if you wanted to make sure you got a pretty heavy duty knife and have it nice and sharp. And you can just whip that out and have a little chicken for dinner. Okay, so, so there's some basic cooking techniques. All right, this is more of a, a stewed type chicken. See all that nice sauce on there? And this obviously is fried chicken. So it just depends on what you're wanting to do. Um, most of the time, the chicken that you're gonna buy at the grocery store is gonna be a young bird, <coughs> excuse me, and it's gonna be suitable for, for just about anything. But if you are using, you know, farm farm birds, um, some of the birds that I have, like I told you, they're, they're pets that I've had for a while. So they're probably tough old birds. And so if I decided to cook them, I'd have to probably do them more like a stewed bird so they'd be nice and tender. Okay, so so there's different ways that um, we can can cook poultry, and honestly, just about anything goes with with poultry. Um, it has a, a mild flavor most of the time, especially you know chicken and turkey. Um, and so here's some cooking techniques that we can uh, we can think about. So dry heat. So think about like grilled chicken breasts, for instance. If they're thin, we can broil them under the broiler. Um, our roasting chicken would be like for a whole chicken, like we were talking about earlier. Okay, so dry heat would be really a, a good way just inside the oven or on top of the grill would be a pretty common way. You have to be kind of careful with that because you'll, you'll dry it out. Um, a lot of times whenever you're um, cooking chicken on the grill, for instance, sometimes you'll brine it. Um, I've seen a lot of people, uh, Miss Shelley uh, actually uh, brines her uh, chicken breasts in Italian dressing um, and the sodium uh, from, from that, from it soaking in that, uh, imparts some uh, moisture through, I guess it's called osmosis, where it pushes out 
uh, the liquid at first and then it draws it back in with the sodium in it, it adds flavor uh, and moisture. Your whole roasted chickens oftentimes, like I told you, I stuff mine and then I pour butter over it um, and that the stuff that's inside of it uh, tends to kind of uh, help uh, help retain the moisture um, to keep it from, from being dry. Okay, here on dry heat with fat or oil. So those are small pieces of chicken that are cut up pretty small. So like a like a sauteed chicken or even like a stir fry. We've made lots of chicken stir fry here before. Um, or pan fry, which you guys are gonna do this week. You guys are gonna make um, uh, chicken masala, um, and which is a, a pan fried uh, version of chicken. Um, a good old deep fried chicken, how about that? So, so those are all fairly uh, small pieces that are gonna cook pretty quickly. Okay, here's moist heat. Okay, so uh, steam, simmer, poach. So these would be, um, we've made poached, I can't remember if that was this class or not, but we've made poached chicken breasts before. Um, the thing with, with steaming and simmering and poaching, one is that you're, you're not adding fat to it. So if you're on a, uh, trying to watch your calories, that would be a great way to do it. The one thing that, that maybe is a little off-putting with that particular cooking technique is that that the meat tends to look a little bit anemic and it doesn't brown. And so oftentimes it will be served with some kind of a sauce or a flavorful broth, or it'll have a, a veg or a rice or something served with it, uh, just to kind of liven it up a little bit. Um, some other, another cooking method would be combination. So, um, which would be like a stewed chicken. I was thinking specifically like cacavan um, is, a, is a whole cut up chicken and it's cooked in a, a wine based sauce and it's simmered on top of the stove. Um, also like chicken with uh, 40 cloves of garlic. And so you'll just put it in like a, a Dutch oven on top of the stove and then it cooks in the in the sauce after you kind of you brown it first and then and then cook it and which is delicious. So those are all uh, acceptable ways that that you can cook something lovely from different kinds of poultry. Okay. All right, we'll stop sharing there. So what do you think about chicken that sounds really good doesn't it. Are you hungry for some from chicken now? Yeah. Mike is. Yeah, I know it's it is some good stuff. And so this week, um, you are going to be making. Let's see, what did I put down for you guys? Um, you're going to be making. Um. Oh, I know what it was. The um, curried chicken salad for for uh tomorrow and then chicken masala florentine and so anytime time you see florentine that means spinach so so that'll be something i hope you guys will enjoy uh making and you can can uh, uh work on your chicken techniques um and then um uh, on uh Oh, no, I told you on that was your one. You're doing chicken masala um, and uh, velvet chicken or uh, lettuce wraps that are, are chicken. And um, your chicken masala will be one that you'll do like a pan fry um, and it has a nice sauce over it. And the velvet chicken is actually kind of like a stir fry. And velveting is, is a process where you have the cut up pieces of meat and you toss it in cornstarch, and then you can either pan fry it or you can boil it. And what that does is it causes this nice um, kind of silky texture on the outside of the meat, which is quite tasty. And that, that particular process is called velveting. And so some of you guys are gonna make that. Um, and then the other group is going to uh, make lettuce wraps. So um, I love to make the those, it has kind of an Asian spicy kind of a, a sesame sweet sauce that goes on top of it. So either way, I hope you guys will enjoy that. Okay. 
All right, any questions, anything going on I can help you with? Not for the time being. Okay, well, I put you some new stuff out there on Moodle. So um, get on there and look. There's, there's two videos, there's vocab, and there's some questions on there and all of that. Uh, the information that you need from for all of that will be in the PowerPoint uh, and in uh, in your book. So you should be able to find all those. And you know, as always, if you get stuck uh, or or don't know, you know, you can always ask me, and I'm happy to help. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, if uh, if you guys don't have any questions or anything else you want to talk about, we'll sign off here. But I'll I'll hang out here just in case you think of something. Otherwise, I will see you at your next scheduled day to be here at school. You guys take care. Okay.